It's Matt Slick Live. Matt is the founder and president of the Christian Apologetics Research Ministry, found online at harm.org. When you have questions about Bible doctrine, turn to Matt Slick Live for answers. Taking your calls and responding to your questions at 877-207-2276. Here's Matt Slick. Everybody, welcome to the show. It's me, Matt Slick. You're listening to Matt Slick Live. These dates is uh, March 20th, 2024. Podcasters, I hope you want to, uh, you know, if you're a podcaster and you're listening, hey, thanks for listening. All right. We have nobody waiting on the lines right now. If you want to give me a call, it's easy. All you have to do is dial 877 207 2276. And uh, let's see. We got any uh, hate mail? Got some uh, radio questions we can get to and uh, stuff like that. All right, look at the stuff that's happening. Now, I just want to let you know that we do stay on the air by your um, generous uh, support. So if you like what you hear in the radio and you want to see uh, the CARM website continue, you want to have more information and um, articles up there, then all you have to do is uh, go to CARM.org forward slash donate and all the information you need is right there now some of you may have not gotten your uh, end of year tax receipts that we sent out we sent out uh, we did it and we got some people who said not getting them so we don't understand what's going on i'll be looking into all of that and next year i'm gonna do a different system to make sure it all gets out there but just letting you guys know and uh, i think that's it i think that's it we have two open lines 877-207-2276 and if you want you can email us at info at carm.org, info at carm.org, and put in the subject line radio comment or radio question, and uh, we can get to the money here and do that sometimes. So there you go. Let's get to Christopher from Raleigh, North Carolina. Christopher, welcome. You're on the air. Hey, Matt. Thank you so much for taking my call. I really sure. appreciate it. Um, appreciate it. Appreciate what you do for the body of Christ and all your knowledge and devotion. Um, so, um, my question is regarding, I'm not sure if you heard about this, but um, the it's either called shepherding movement or heavy shepherding. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so, I recently left a church that has a lot of the characteristics of that church. Mm -hmm. um, now, my question, my question regarding that is how other than praying and maybe that's all I should do, but um, how could I go about like presenting to like people that I love in that church? Like, Hey, I believe this church is operating under this. Like, okay. I, so that's my question. I'm just kind of seeing, getting some wisdom and seeing what I can do. All right. So we need to define our terms. What is the shepherding movement? And it's an old movement, not like millions of years old, kind of old, but it's been around for a few decades. And basically what it is, is that a true discipleship, true Christianity means that you will be governed by the elders, by the pastorate, uh, and they will shepherd you, guide you, run things through them, make sure everything's okay with them in your life decisions, etc. cetera. And, uh, that's the, the basics of the shepherding movement. Is that what you've seen happening at the, this church? Oh, 100%. And um, I've, like, experienced things where it's like, you know, they were, like, propping me up to be a leader and stuff. And then when I wasn't, quote, unquote, being good, I kind of got put on the shelf and forgot about almost. Um, and other various different things, too. Yeah. So, Okay. Now, this is, this is difficult to diagnose and talk about over the radio because I'm not in that church, sitting there, seeing what's being said, experiencing all of it. However, normally speaking, um, the kind of generic characteristics that this deals with are uh, the, 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 the admonition to subject the body of Christ in that local uh, body, you know, to the leadership of that uh, group to a heavy-handed and controlling uh, level, 
All right. And uh, so what they'll do often, uh, yeah, what they're, what they're going to do is they're going to be from the pulpit, they're going to be preaching sermons about how the elders are the ones in the charge. Submit yourself to the elders, submit to this, and that they're in control. And so you're supposed to do that. And this is dangerous because uh, that's only as good as the people in charge are. And uh, they should be pointing to the lordship of Christ, not their own lordship. All right. So that's this is what the basics are. Okay. So uh, what they want to do, what they're doing to a large degree, is replacing Christ with themselves to, in, in some areas. Uh, and this is dangerous, of course, to replacing him because they want to be able to tell you everything that you need to know. Well, I've seen this kind of, I've heard of people who've been in it and talked to people who've been in it and what they've said and how they've said it worked has been pretty bad um, where they are in, being controlled a lot. And so I remember I talked to some people locally where a church pastor was the one that you had to go to in order to find out what decisions to make in life, in order to uh, make, well, just to run your life. And it also came to the point where the uh, the people started serving the pastor and going over to his house, washing dishes, cleaning up, fixing the yard and things like that as service and what it meant to be in subjection to the leadership. OK. So yeah. this is the kind of thing. Is that kind of stuff happening there, too? Um, not to that degree. Um, I, I know you got a lot of followers. Can I just give you an example? Sure. No problem. Um, real, real quick. Uh, so. Now, don't get me wrong. I believe as as like Christians, we should serve the church and stuff. But there was uh, one particular time where um, they were renovating the foyer, and um, the the house that I was living in, which is a whole other thing, a part of this whole thing, uh, they call it the guy's house, aka like a discipleship house. Mm -hmm. And if you lived there, you you had you had there was no option. You had to do it or you would get rebuked for not serving. Um, and, w I mean, we had to do, like, some professional work. And not that I'm trying to get paid, but it was, like, it was almost like, no, you need to serve or you're in sin. <laughs> kind of thing. So stuff like that happens. Like, oh, you're not serving, you're, no, right. you need to do this um, right. kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So Yeah. Yeah, it's a dangerous thing. And so then your spirituality is judged. And then when people see that you are are being shunned a little bit or rebuked by the leadership, then you're an outcast. And uh, yeah. yeah, and then becomes manipulative. Uh, yeah, it, it's it's bad. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh -huh. So one of the solutions okay. is to um, to lock all the doors, change all the locks on the church, put barriers up. And uh, put motion detectors so that when anybody walks up, a super loud screaming uh, bell goes off and people don't want to go there anymore. That's one solution. Probably not really effective. Uh, what you can do uh, is the biblical model is to go to the elders of the church first and bring the charges, bring the issues to them. And you want mm. to document everything. This is what's happening. This is not in scripture. It's uh, overreaching and it's controlling. And you present this to the elders. I would expect that the elders would reject it. At that point, you then have the option of going to the church. And one of the options is to work up a one page, two page document. And this is the kind of thing I will, I've actually done this, gone, gone to a, out in front of a church and done this and passed out literature to the congregation members about what's going on and they don't like that i got mm -hmm. the cops called on me by the uh, by the uh, the church i did this here in boise once so uh it, it's just options you could just say hey i'm out of here but if they're controlling then one of the dangers is uh a danger is that it could become a cult so yeah and, and you know I'm not saying it's going to Okay, it could be that you're completely off your rocker and you're just, uh, you know, spewing a bunch of lies because you're from the devil. However, uh, you know, it's possible. Okay, uh, but uh, 
generally speaking, if you're familiar with what's called the shepherding movement, then you've experienced it. And you're telling me the stuff that is consistent with the oppression of the shepherding movement. And it becomes controlling, manipulative, and uh, spiritually damaging. Okay. And it, uh, yeah, it can cause others to become prideful. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Because you're not living up mm. to it. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, Matt. Well, I, I really appreciate it. I'm going to be very prayerful because there's people who I do love that, um, honestly, like uh, there's a situation happened. I'm going to try to be real quick. Sure, um, no recently, a lot of people had left because of all of this. Yeah. And, um, and honestly, after the people that had left, there was, and I told my fiance this, I said, watch, because she doesn't, she didn't go to the church. She moved. Anyway, um, I told her, I was like, watch every met, every meeting that we're going to, the, the church has is going to be about how, um, someone is full of demons and they're being operated by, from Satan and all this. And sure enough, Matt, every meeting they were talking about people being disobedient and, all this and they're they're being they're um you know under the operation of demonic powers oh. um and yeah. i called it from a mile away and they broke one person broke fellowship um because of it and and it's you know the person that got hurt is like well i'm sorry like i think it's good to you know i need to break you know take a step back as friends and stuff and it, it just it okay. blew me away i was like man these are hurting people yep. but yeah um you, know, you are uh, you're right in the middle of it, and you've experienced it. Now you you, you accurately predicted what's going to happen. Yes, it becomes dangerous and can become cult like. If it were to to progress unchecked, yeah. then they become a group that you know only true Christians are there. And if you leave, it's because you're not a true Christian. That kind of thing. You know, it, yeah. it becomes like this. Yeah. 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 So. Man. Now, here's a question for you. What do you do about it? Because you called me up, and maybe, maybe, I don't know, between you and God, I'm not going to put pressure on you or not or whatever, maybe uh, God wants you to do something about it. Maybe he wants you to write something up, distribute it to the church. Maybe he wants you to go to the elders. Maybe he wants you to just do nothing. Who knows? So, yeah. uh, but, uh, you know, I'm a little bit obstreperous. And so I have gone to churches and talked to, tried to talk to the leadership about various issues. At the end, basically, what you're going to get is what I've always gotten: rejection and hostility from Christian churches. Yeah. When you say why? You know, when I was doing over women pastors, why do you have women pastors? Oh yeah, yeah. I got the cops called on me. I was threatened with another another place. It's bad. So. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, you, and also. Um, it sounds to me like there's a demonic influence already working in that church and the leadership. And if you were to try and uh, work through to correcting it, you could come under a demonic attack. I'm not saying something's going to happen, you know, but I mean, it, it just sometimes it gets spiritually rough. Trust me, I know about this. We're working in this ministry yeah. for so long. Uh, demonic attacks are uh, not regular, but kind of regular. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right, thanks, Matt. I really appreciate your um, your insight, your wisdom, and man, you you are such a blessing to the body of Christ. I mean, it, seriously, I'm I'm grateful, and I, I pray that God blesses you even more and and increase and um, you know. But well, thank you so much for your time. Hey, you're welcome so much, brother. I really appreciate that. God bless, buddy. All yeah. right, hey folks, there's a break. We'll be right back after these messages. Mm -hmm. My name is Judy Teeter, and I'm the mother of three boys. My youngest, Joe, was a great kid. He loved sports, music, and his youth group. One day, Joe asked me to drive him to an after-school event, which was about a mile from our home. I was driving through a green light when a car in cross traffic ran a red light and drove right into the side of our car, killing Joe. The driver was talking on her phone, so she never even saw the red light. She was so absorbed in her phone call. Before the crash, I didn't realize just talking on a cell phone while driving was so dangerous. Now it's something I think about every day. According to the National Safety Council, about one in four car crashes involves a cell phone. Hands-free is no safer. When you're behind the wheel, put away your phone. For Joe and for the thousands of needless deaths every year, remember... There is no safe way to talk on a cell phone while driving. 
Find out more at nsc.org slash calls kill. Here are the contest rules for the Truth Network. Prizes won are not transferable, redeemable for cash, or exchangeable for any other prize. All prizes must be redeemed for the station within 30 days of winning. Only one prize per household for any station of Truth Broadcasting within any 30-day period. The rest of our contest rules are listed under the About Us link at our website, truthnetwork.com. Thanks for playing and listening to the Truth Network. From Loveworth Binding Ministries, here's pastor, teacher, and author, Dr. Adrian Rogers, with a treasure from the Word. The Lord Jesus told us in Matthew chapter 24 and verse 37 that as it was in the days of Noah, it's going to be just before he comes back again. And I want to say to you that the days of Noah have returned to us right now. Now, what were the days of Noah? Well, number one, they were days of apostasy. People were believing ungodly philosophies. But not only was it a day of apostasy, it was a day of anarchy. Violence filled the earth. And it was a day of wicked ideas. There were philosophers and, and idea people and politicians who were trying to remake and remold society in that day. And the same sins that produced the flood in Noah's day have reached up to heaven today. And God is going to judge the world one more time. It was water the first time. It will be fire the next time. For more about Love Worth Finding and Adrian Rogers, visit our website at lwf.org. It's Matt Slick Live, taking your calls at 877-207-2276. Here's Matt Slick. Everybody, welcome back to the show. Let's get to Paul from Salt Lake City. Paul, welcome. You're on the air. Hey, Matt. Thanks hey. for taking my call. Um, just wanted to preface a little bit. Um, I just barely started uh, listening to you, well, uh, a bit ago. Uh, stumbled upon your program, and uh, I got to be a completely honest some of the things that i heard you say were a little bit uh going against what i believed at that point in time i was uh <laughs> That's okay. raised uh roman catholic and mm -hmm. you know it was like eh, well this is a shock but you know once again when you're stepping on like somebody says you know stepping on somebody's toes at least you're getting their attention yeah which it did mm -hmm. um when i grew up like i said in the in the roman catholic church was an altar boy got into the knights of columbus thing to that and then um, fell away because it just it just didn't seem for me right. Mm -hmm. It kind of rebelled, and then just recently came back. Went on to CARM after some of your um, uh, radio programs, and was looking into the differences of you know the Roman Catholic uh, canonized Bible, uh, you know having seventy seven mm -hmm. books as opposed to all the other Bibles that I've seen, and it been looked into having the sixty six books. Um, and I've tried to find a copy of the, the, the Roman Catholic book with the 77, um, or, or Bible with the 77 books, and I can't necessarily find one. Can you kind of go into a little bit more detail of how the 77 books are, relate to um, the canonization and how that makes the Roman Catholic Church, as you say, a, an apostasy, as it were, and yeah, you know, going from the uh, apostate, right? Uh, uh, mm -hmm. You know, from putting it back on the man from the Pope aspect, yeah. um, you know, and kind of get into that a little bit more just for my well, ex Roman Catholic brain. Okay. Well, there's a lot you asked, and let's see if I can go through a few of them. So, when Luther nailed the 95 Theses to the Wittenberg door in Germany, 1531, um, October 31st, I think it was 31 he uh, ignited a firestorm. And the reason the kindling lit is because it was all ready to be lit. What that means is people were already under the great oppression of the Roman Catholic Church, which had become intertwined politically and with uh, military force uh, throughout Europe in some areas, in different degrees in different uh, countries. And 
the uh, the issue of having a Bible in your own possession was punishable by death. Uh, a lot a lot of the Roman Catholic teachings and stuff they would they uh, they burn people at the stake for this. So it was pretty bad. Okay. Well, anyway, the printing press had uh, been developed, and so Luther was able to. Um, he, he was sequestered in a castle after the Roman Catholic Church sent some people to kill him. And so he got sequestered and uh, translated the, the Bible into, uh, into German because he knew the original languages and then printed it. And this caused problems for the Roman Catholic Church. So the Reformation started because of, of this whole kind of thing. I'm not getting exact details right in every order, but this is what fomented the, the Reformation. People started reading the texts of the Bible for themselves. The printing press is what did this. All right. So in 1546, the Roman Catholic Church then officially said the apocryphal books are scripture. Now, I talk to Catholics all the time, and they tell me that the... Protestants took out the books of the Bible. That was never the case that they were in. The, the, uh, the church, the Catholic church officially recognized them in 1546. Okay. So that's, that's a fact. That's history. Now there's, that's just a little bit of information. I can tell you why the apocryphal books were not included if you're interested, or I can kind of go a different direction. If you have another question, I can kind of focus on that because you did ask me a lot of stuff, which is fine. I'm just saying, which one do you want me to focus on? Uh, the, the, how, why they were included or taken out from the other books? They were not taken out because okay. they never were in. Okay. But uh, in okay. in the book of Luke eleven fifty one, Jesus says this: "From the blood of Abel to the blood of Zechariah, who was killed between the altar and the house of God, yes, I tell you, it shall be charged against this generation." So what that means is the blood of Abel, that's Genesis, and uh, Zechariah was Chronicles. In the Jewish canon mm -hmm. arrangement of the Old Testament books at that time, Chronicles was the last one. Today, wow. it's Malachi for us. They're the same books. They're just arranged in a different pattern. I don't know why they got changed, but that's what it is. So what Jesus was saying was from the first to the last book of the Old Testament, and that excluded the Apocrypha. And he knew about the Apocrypha. Mm -hmm. Furthermore, in Luke 24, 44, Jesus says, uh, these are my words which I've spoken to you while I was still with you, that all the things written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. So the law, the prophets, and the Psalms were the divisions of the Old Testament canon, which excluded the Apocrypha. So what Jesus said is that the, these are my words. He says, uh, all the things which are written about me in the law, the prophets, and the Psalms. So he was, because he says in John 5.39, the scriptures are about him. In John 5.39, you search the scriptures because in them you think you have eternal life, but it is these that bear witness of me. The scriptures bear witness of Christ. And then Jesus says that he spoke to the disciples about what were written about him in the law, the prophets, and the Psalms, and the Apocrypha he excluded. So Jesus himself rejected the apocryphal books because he said the scriptures are about him. And then he spoke about what was written about him in the law, the prophets and the Psalms. That's the Jewish division of the Old Testament books, which they did not recognize included the apocryphal books. This is what Jesus said. So this is proof right there that he rejected the apocryphal books. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. Sure. Well, and then uh, just a real quick sure. follow-up question on that. So, mm -hmm. with uh, you were talking about, uh, you know, Luther um, and the Reformation and stuff like that. So, is it just the Roman Catholic um, aspect of it, as opposed to like the Lutheran Catholic uh, uh, division? Um, that w is the Lutheran Catholic, uh, the Lutheran, an okay um, some path to go. Some is. To, um, from the Roman Catholic. So, well, yes and no. Uh, I went to a Lutheran college and a Presbyterian seminary. So when, when Luther did what he did, it caused a firestorm. And all of a sudden, you know, Europe's in, in an uproar over all of this stuff. And anyway, and there was some bad stuff done on both, both sides. It's just a fact of history. People made a lot of mistakes. And then Calvin, John Calvin, who was in France, 
he was part of the Reformation movement, but he was a generation after Luther. And Calvin wrote what's called the Institutes of the Christian Religion, probably, aside from the Bible, probably the single most influential book ever written in the past thousand years, aside from the scriptures, you know, the, the translations. And because it shaped the the uh, the foundations uh, ethically and politically of Western civilization as they move through, uh, and that's a whole other story. Okay, so you have Luther, and then you have Calvin. Well, as as is the case, if you want to mess something up, all you need is two things: people and time. So Lutheranism is divided into some good and bad. Calvinism or Presbyterianism is divided into some good and bad groups. And we can talk about that in a little bit because there's a break. So if you want to hold, okay, we got plenty of time here. Hey, folks, we'll be right back after these messages. Let's uh, get back with Paul after the break. And hopefully you're still listening. We'll be right back. I spend a lot of time in the garage but even more time in the rain and mud. In 95, I helped tow your moving trailer. And in 09, it was sparks from me, your chains, dragging behind your truck that accidentally started a wildfire. Spark a change, not a wildfire. Visit SmokeyBear.com, brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service, your state forester, and the Ad Council. Only you can prevent wildfires. Happy kids heal faster. That's why Starlight Children's Foundation is dedicated to improving the mental well-being of sick kids, regardless of their illness or injury. When a child is hospitalized, they are scared, lonely, and stressed. Being in hospital facing painful treatments takes away from the happiness of childhood. But that's where Starlight comes in. At Starlight, we provide entertainment through our gaming stations, comfort with our specially designed hospital gowns, Play with our toy deliveries and distraction through our virtual reality headsets. Starlight programs are what happiness is made of. The things that make being a kid special. The simple power of a smile. Delivered to over 800 children's hospitals and medical facilities across the country. They make a lifetime of difference for sick kids. Learn more at starlight.org. Hi, I'm E.J. Williams for American Humane. For thousands of years, dogs have been our best friends in our worst times. Today, we're also learning that our best friends, millions of whom are abandoned each year, are often the best medicine when people are facing obstacles. To help both people and animals, organizations like American Humane have been working to harness the healing power of the human-animal bond finding animals in need of forever homes and training them as life-saving service and therapy dogs to help our veterans, the elderly, and children overcome the daily obstacles of life. In this way, the rescued can become the rescuers. To find out how you can help give animals and the people they help a new leash on life, <laughs> please visit AmericanHumane.org. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Because the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. It's Matt Slick Live, taking your calls at 877-207-2276. Here's Matt Slick. All right, everybody, welcome back to the show. If you want to give me a call, all you have to do is dial 877-207-2276. Paul, you're back on the air. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So what do you got, buddy? Yeah, so... Um, mm -hmm. Well, that was it. Thank you. Uh, I appreciate your explanation. And I've gone on to your website. And that's where I got a lot of this information as well. I just wanted to okay. kind of get your take on it directly. Um, okay. You know, I, I, coming coming back to um, Christianity, as it were, you know, there's a lot of information out there. And I'm just, uh, I, I'm finding my way back. So, um, well, 
I appreciate you and what you're doing. Can I uh, talk to you for a few more minutes about this? Because I'm very concerned. I don't want you to go back to Catholicism because it's not Christian. It's a bold statement. Yeah. I know a lot of Catholics are hearing this, but the reason it's not is because the gospel itself, which is around the death, burial, and resurrection, uh, the, the Apostle Paul called by Jesus in Acts 9, he clearly teaches us, as Jesus does, I can show you the references, that our salvation, our forgiveness of sins is by faith alone in what God has done. Mm -hmm. The right. Roman Catholic Church curses that. And it says in paragraph 2068 right. that you attain salvation through faith, baptism, and the observance of the commandments. In paragraph 2036, it says, keeping the natural law, the precept of the natural law is necessary for salvation. Mm -hmm. Necessary. And in paragraph 2070, it says that the Ten Commandments are a, uh, an expression of the, the uh, natural law. So it's saying you must keep the Ten Commandments to be saved. Well, we can't do that. We, we can't right. because we're not good enough. There's no way. Yeah. And so the right. Roman Catholic Church says that you have to. And I debate this all the time with people, all the time with Catholics. I know this topic very well. And so I can go into quite a bit about this. And I've written a great deal on it. But not only that, it teaches uh, the prayer and adoration uh, of, of uh, prayer to and adoration of, of Mary. And if you were to go to CARM and you look up the apparitions of Mary, I use the apparitions as a proof that the Roman Catholic Church is false because the apparitions in Guadalupe and Fatima that the, the Catholic Church says are official really is Mary. They teach demonic doctrine. And I know this because right. I know what the Bible says. It's not just my personal interpretation, like they'd like to say. That's not what it is. It's, it, it, it's you know, the, the apparitions say, you know, all who come to me, I promise salvation, everyone who loves me. You know, it, it's these apparitions are, it's demonic. It's not talking about Jesus. And so, right. and then then one last thing. This is in uh, the Neil Obstadt and the Imprimatur are seals of approval from bishops that state that a certain writing that, uh, is approved of the Roman Catholic system and worthy of being taught to the Catholic members. The uh, Imprimatur and the Neil Obstadt are in the book Fundamentals of Catholic Dogma by uh, Ludwig Ott, O-T-T. And on page 213, it says this, that Mary, by her entering into the divine sacrifice of her son, made atonement for our sins. So they're elevating her to a level that is just unwarranted. So the Roman Catholic Church teaches a false gospel and promotes idolatry. Okay? It's not Christian. Now, and, you know, and I completely agree with that. Oh, so good. Right. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, and that's where I, I the, my biggest, uh, well, I, I, believe what uh what you're saying about that because i've i've cross-referenced a lot of things with the bible you know the okay. whole purgatory thing uh -huh. and, and things of that nature as well you know and you know praying to mary that's not in the bible mm -hmm. um so you know i've i've i I've, I've come to know and trust that the bible is what you know is the gospel is okay. the truth and and to measure everything against that so and that's why you know like i said at the beginning the, the shock to me was growing up in, you know, the Roman Catholic way was the way. And now it's, it's you know, clearly for me, it's not. Yeah, it's um, not and I just want to make sure that I'm, you know, I want to do what I can to, to not follow that to a point, but also I still want to be part of the body of Christ. You know, I want yeah. to um, uh, do what is the great commission. You know, I want to evangelize and, and, and things of that nature, but I still want to be part of a, a, of a church as well, because that's, you know, kind of yes. what we're, we're asked to do so um, can, can i ask what city yeah, you're in so down it's, there it's, I'm, I'm, can, say what can i you're in salt lake city or proper or like in sandy or no actually i'm i'm up north i'm in i'm in ogden actually oh, okay so. okay yeah um ogden yeah i may be down there doing a debate uh in june or july anyway in ogden area but i know some people uh in uh sandy and they you know, they've been there for years and years and they're good Christians and they know Mormonism inside out, backwards, forward. They could tell you what churches are good, but I don't know about Ogden area. That's the only problem. So, okay. but on CARM, there's an article, what to look for in a church. You can just look it up, what to look for in yeah, a church. 
and uh, check it out. If you got questions about something, you know, call me up or email. Say, hey, is this a good church? You know, and then, uh, well, you know, take a look. You know, okay. Yeah, I'll definitely do that. Thanks, Matt. Again, bless you for what you're doing. Um, you know, radio program has kind of brought me back. So, you know, I, I spend a lot of time listening now and, you know, reading my Bible every day. And, you know, I just want to I just want to make sure that, uh, it, again, it feels right. But again, we know how the heart is. Right. Um, I just want to make sure that, uh, you know, I'm doing what God is asking me to do and wow. praying on it every day. So thank wow. you for what you do. Man, I, I, hey, I keep listening because I'm, there's a possibility in a couple of weeks of me being down there for um, uh, a general conference at the LDS Temple. So, uh, mm -hmm. you know, if I do if I do go down there, I announce it in the radio. People want to meet me and stuff like that. You know, it's fun. But at any rate, so, but, but good for you, man. Good for you. Okay. So praise God. Keep, uh, just keep reading that word and find a good church. All right. Will do. Thanks, okay. Matt. God bless you. All right, man. God bless. All right. Well, praise God. Praise God. All right. Let's see. Next long. Ooh, waiting a long time. Andrew from Ohio. Andrew, welcome. Sorry, we waited a long half hour, um, but you're on. It's all right, Matt. No problem. Okay. How are you doing? Doing all right. <laughs> um, a lot going I on. guess continuing on the. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm sorry. No, it's good. Um, mm -hmm. From what the, sort of what the last caller was talking about, can you um, kind of give a like an apologetic defense of why Paul's letters are included in scripture. Sure. Uh, and I'm just going to listen to your rant. Sure. Because if you go to Acts, uh, go to Acts chapter nine, what happened in Acts nine is that Paul was called by Jesus to be the witness and the apostle to the Gentiles. So Jesus himself called him. Now, Peter himself was also called by Jesus. And so that's, that's a given Peter. So this is what Peter says in second Peter three sixteen. And he's talking about Paul. He's talking about because he says this in verse 15. Regard the patience of our Lord's salvation, just as also our beloved brother Paul, according to the wisdom given him, wrote to you, as also in all his letters, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to understand, which the untaught and unstable distort as they do the rest of the scriptures to their own destruction. So Paul, Peter related Paul's writings to scripture. Okay. Okay. That's good. Yeah. And uh, then there's also a verse. I can see if I can find it really quickly while I'm looking at my Bible program. Yes. This is 2 Corinthians 7, 12. Paul's writing. It says, the rest I say to you, not the Lord, that if any brother has a wife who's an unbeliever. So he's saying, well, you know, not the Lord. So he knows when he's speaking of himself and when he's speaking of the Lord. Okay. And I also have, I was wondering about um, Revelation and being, you know, the, I'm the law and the prophets and um, the final prophecy and how can Re how can Revelation be, you know, in addition to that or is it, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like how is that? What's Revelation that scripture? In the, in the time frame. No, just like is, is, it, is it? It's considered prophecy, right? Yes. Or is it not? Yes, it is. It's a prophetic book. And yes. um, okay, so what's the final, like, you know, the end of prophecy? Or I guess it's not because, go ahead, sorry. Okay, I think well, you know the, what I'm trying to ask. The, yeah, it, generally speaking, <laughs> the book of Revelation is considered the last book of the, of the Bible that's written chronologically. Now, there's some debate on it, but that's generally the, the view. And so uh, this is because God is the one who is true, and he knows the future, and because he's ordained it, and he's revealing what's going to be happening. So that's all that's going on there. And so the book of Revelation is recognized as being scripture by the Christian church. And then not declaring it scripture, recognizing it as, okay? All right. Well, thank you. Appreciate you. All right. Does that help? Yes, sir. All right. Well, good then. Hope you have a good day. <laughs> Thanks. I need it. All right. Bye-bye. All right. God bless. All right, next we're going to get to Chris, but we got a break coming up in the next 30 seconds. So I'm going to hold off and get into him. And before the break, I just want to tell you that we do stay on the air by your support. And I rarely really talk about this, but I, I need to start doing it and letting you know that if you are uh, interested in supporting this ministry, not just the radio, but the website as well, and the missionaries that we have in different parts of the world, uh, please consider just going to carm.org, C-A-R-M dot O-R-G. 
forward slash donate and you can set up something we don't ask much five or ten dollars a month uh, recurring is really great one-time donation is also very helpful and uh, we just uh, lay it before you we'll be right back after these messages please stay tuned Hi, I'm Peter Sagal. When we were growing up, my two brothers and I just loved our Uncle Ted. He was like a really cool big brother who always brought around the best toys and took us to the best places and with whom we always had the most fun. It was odd, though, when we got older to realize he wasn't nearly as outgoing and adventurous with other adults. I found out much later that this might have had something to do with the ostomy bag he wore ever since he was diagnosed with Crohn's disease as a teenager and had part of his lower intestine removed. Theodore Skolnick, my Uncle Ted, died last year at the age of 80, never having once mentioned his illness to me or my brothers. He left a large bequest to the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation to help fund better treatments for these diseases and also to help other people, old and young, seek and get help for the situation that he was never able to talk about. Don't feel you need to hide your Crohn's or colitis. Go to spillyourguts.org to learn more about the treatments available and even find a specialist. That's spillyourguts.org. Remember the buddy system? It worked when we were little and it worked when Jesus sent out his disciples. True Commentary with Stu Epperson, author of the book, Last Words of Jesus. It says in Mark chapter six, when Jesus took off the training wheels and first sent his disciples out on a commission, he sent them out two by two, the buddy system. Why is this important? Because no one is an island. Quit trying to be a lone ranger Christian. We need discipleship. We need community, encouragement, comfort, support, protection. Who has your back? Who is your buddy missionary partner? It worked with Jesus. He sent them out two by two. All the disciples went out on missionary journeys together two by two and it will work for you today. Make sure you're discipling someone, you're being discipled by someone else, and when you go on mission with Jesus, always take a buddy. True Commentary with Stu Epperson, author of the book, Last Words of Jesus. Available now in bookstores. Learn more at lastwordsofjesus.com. Yes, God really loves us. But for a lot of people, our attachment to the past outweighs our commitment to the future. We have to stop looking back and start looking forward. The Truth Network encourages you to forget the past. Face it and move on with the love of Jesus Christ. This message is for Karina, our mom who finished her high school diploma at age 28. Hi, Mom. It's Emmeth and Nicholas. Congratulations on getting your diploma. You worked so hard and I've taught us so much. We love you. When you graduate, they graduate. Finish your high school diploma for you and for them. Visit finishyourdiploma.org to find free and supportive adult education centers near you. It's Matt Slick Live, taking your calls at 877-207-2276. Here's Matt Slick. All right, everyone, welcome back to the show. Last quarter of the hour. If you want to give me a call, 877-207-2276. Let's get on with Chris from North Carolina. Chris, welcome. You're on the air. Matt, we're shaking bacon. <laughs> Ooh, lots of stuff, it's man. Me You're making me smile. What's that? <laughs> it's me again, Margaret. That's from a song. That's Look, a... quick question, Matt. Mm -hmm. About three weeks ago, you were talking, and I caught the tail end of the conversation, and the caller was, I'm not sure what his initial question was, but you were talking about cults and you named a couple that you thought were cults. Um, and I thought one of them was the International Pentecostal Church. No, United Pentecostal. You, the United Pentecostal. Yes. Mm -hmm. So what's your thoughts on the International Pentecostal Holiness Church? Well, it just so happens that uh, because you were waiting and the producer typed in that name, to know what you're talking about, I researched it during the break. And uh, often is the case with such a title, you don't want to judge a book by its title, but often with a title, they're usually uh, overly charismatic and uh, deny the Trinity. However, 
this looks like uh, a good church in that it affirms a trinity because it says the unity of Godhead. There are three persons of one substance of eternal being and equal in holiness. You know, personally, I wish they were a little more precise in the, their statement of faith. Um, you know, I, I looked at a lot of statement of faith and they could word it better here and there that this, you know, it's a small thing. But uh, the only really, con and I looked at this stuff, justification by faith alone, but here's something that bothered me. And it might be because the writing is not as clear as it needs to be. Number seven, I'm going to read, then go to 11 in their statement of faith. It says, number seven, we believe that Jesus Christ shed his blood for the remission of sins that are past, for the regeneration of penitent sinners, and for salvation from sin and from sinning. So the wording is not very good because it implies the idea that their sins are paid for by the past. Uh, your past sins are paid for at the point of when you get saved. That's the implication because it says for their missions that are past. And it should say, if it's really biblical, for all the sins, past, present, and future, that Christ did this. So it could be that they're just not wording it properly, or it could be that there's a problem. I don't know. And so then it says for the regeneration of penitent sinners. And then we get into some other theological things about that, which I would ask them, uh, the logical versus temporal priority, regeneration, faith, and things like that. But those are nuances I like to get in with people. And uh, then 11 says, we believe that the Pentecostal baptism of the Holy Ghost, and generally speaking, remember, I'm speaking generally, but when people say Holy Ghost, okay, uh, they might say Holy Ghost, or they might say Holy Ghost. Well, the emphasis is on the first, very first syllable, the Holy Ghost. And I noticed the, the commonality of that pronunciation among charismatic, hyper-charismatic groups. I don't know why, but I just noticed that, hey, they're all saying the same way. And so it became a, a uh, like, oh, what's going on here when they say that? But they don't say, there's only just the word Holy Ghost, two words. I don't know how they're pronouncing it. I don't think it means any big deal, but it's just one of the things I've observed. But this is what concerned me. What We believe that the ba Pentecostal baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire is obtainable by a definite act of appropriating faith on the part of the fully cleansed believer. So this t it kind of tells me or opens up the possibility that what's going on is that it is a hyper charismatic group that you're supposed to speak in tongues to manifest salvation in the presence of the Holy Spirit. And that's what it says. And the initial evidence of reception of this experience is speaking with other tongues as the Spirit gives utterance. And they're mistaken there. The, the fact is that people spoke in tongues in many places in the, old, in the New Testament when the Holy Spirit came on them. But it also says in 1 Corinthians 11 that not all speak with tongues because the Lord doesn't give it to everybody. And so the tongues that were spoken of yeah. in Acts chapter 2 were probably the languages of, that were commonly understood by the individuals of that geographical area who had gathered. And they're speaking in other tongues, not just a Hebrew tongue. So there's debate on this. But, but when they write something like this, it causes me concern. It doesn't mean they're not Christian. But it causes me concern that, uh, wait a minute, are you saying then that uh, you know you have the Holy Spirit if and only if you're speaking in tongues? And if you never speak in tongues, does it mean you don't have the Holy Spirit? Those are the questions that I have to ask. If they were to say, if you never speak in tongues for years and years, then you're never a Christian, then that would be a false teaching. If they say, no, some people do, some people don't, then you know we just prefer that they do. Well, okay. I'd say that's a bit of an aberrant thing, but uh, that they're within orthodoxy. So you see the, dif the difficulty here where we're at, okay? Yeah. Yeah, and then number 12 is also a bit of a problem. Because what yeah. I'm thinking, what you, what you were just referring to as speaking in tongues um, is when they had Paul right there in the front. No, no. Um, Peter, and um, they said, how is it? that these are unlearned men, but we hear them in our own tongue. Right. Right. That's Acts 2. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. But yep. overall, overall, it looks okay. Overall, it looks uh, within orthodoxy. From what the statement of okay. faith says, I have some concerns 
but they're not like concerns of they're denying the Trinity, denying the deity or resurrection. They don't think they said that if he raised, crucified, dead, and buried to my second. Well, very God, perfect man. Okay, who actually man, suffered you, was, you said. Yeah, and uh, it doesn't say he was raised. Uh, now that could just be an oversight. Well, look at this. This is good, though. So that the two whole and perfect natures in Christ, that's good. The Godhead and the manhood were joined together in one person. Very good. Never to be divided. That's very good, too. Whereas in one Christ, very God, perfect man, who actually suffered, was crucified, dead, and buried to reconcile the Father to us. Oh, it does say, here it is. Uh, we believe that Christ did truly rise from the dead and took again his body with all things uh, appertaining to the perfection of man's nature. Interesting. And uh, heaven sits there. And yeah, so they, uh, yeah, they affirm all the essentials. It looks like they're within orthodoxy. It just, I think they're a little bit, might be a bad thing in that there might be too charismatic, hyper charismatic stuff like that, name it and claim it, because it also says in number 12, we believe in the healing as an atonement, so that you're supposed to be healed, but not always the case. Now, it I just depends. Past, I do know the pastor, he said, um, he's referenced it a couple of times that um, he'll say something, he says, and I'm not talking about the name it and claim it, but he okay. said one that ripped me up. He said, uh, blab it and grab it. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, so. the pastor is super awesome. But mm -hmm. you had referenced about going to CARM, mm -hmm. and you said go to telling the other caller. You said go to CARM and go, and I I miss, I couldn't follow it after that. Um, when I went to CARM about um, determining cults and things like that, yeah, was it under heresy? Oh, no, just type in uh, what to look for in a church. That was what I was talking about just recently on the radio. That okay, because makes... this was about three weeks ago, and you were talking oh. about, you know, um, it's cults and all, and you told you told the caller, said, go to CARM um, and then um, go to something and then something else. And I didn't know if it was oh. heresies or what. I don't I know. know you got uh, you know, I did... going on. Yeah, I don't know what the yeah, I don't remember fine. what the topic was. Yeah, that's an even better reason to uh, research calm. Well, Matt, thank you so much. I know you ain't got but a couple of minutes, so if there's anybody calling, I'm gonna let you scoop. But thank you, sir. How? All right, all right. Well, God bless. Okay, we'll see you. You too, Matt. Take care now. All right, brother. All right. And also one last concern I have about that group is do they affirm women pastors and elders? And I was looking, I can't find that. And, uh, and, uh, I'll, I'll be looking while I'm talking. All right. Let's get to, uh, Herb from, uh, Raleigh, North Carolina. Welcome. I'm sure you're on here. Hey, Matt. I know you don't have much time, but I wanted to ask you real quickly. I saw a movie not long ago with Jesus of Nazareth, and it brought to my mind about the when King Herod, I think it was, to kill, wanted to have all the babies killed. Well, I looked it up online on the computer on some site mm -hmm. just to learn more about it, and it said that they don't necessarily believe that actually happened that Christians just dramatize that. No, it happened. Have you ever heard of something that ridiculous? Or yes. what's your feeling on the story? I, I'm, I have no reason to doubt it, but I'm amazed that some people, some in that article, they said that they don't, they don't put a lot of credence into that. Well, I um, didn't know what you thought of. yeah, it did happen because it's recorded in the scriptures. And that's it. It's not just a hyperbole exaggeration or anything. And uh, so... It did happen, and yes, I do know of, of instances and people who will deny that such a thing did happen. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But it did. Okay. Well, that's sad. Yes, I it mean, is. as horrible as it was, and then people deny. That's just unbelievable. But, well, buddy, I appreciate it. I just wanted to catch that real quick. I thought, I thought about it. Let me call you before you get off there. And I, I listen to you every day and oh, still nice. praying for you. Boy, do I need it. Boy, do I need it. <laughs> okay. Yep. And if you, you spend time with me. One, buddy. I was rear What's that? I was rear-ended yesterday. Wow. I, I said I was rear-ended Friday in my car, so I'm recovering from that. So I need it too right now. I'm pretty 
pretty sore, but I'm okay. Well, praise God. We've got a prayer team, and uh, Joanne's on it. So what she'll do automatically, because that's how she is, she will um, just start having you lift it up on prayer. Okay? Okay. Tell them, thank you so much. And thank you as always, Matt. And God bless you all forever. You, you too, man. God bless. Thanks. All right. That's all right. Bye bye now. Okay. All right. Mm. Oh, man. So I'm going to just ge very generically say for those of you who are out there in, uh, in CARM land, would you please consider praying for this ministry? There's, uh, Let's just say, let's just say some attacks are coming. Um, you know, just part of ministry, just stuff, and uh, just ask you, just you know, just pray. I'm not going to get any details. It's not a big deal, but uh, if you would be so kind as to lift up this ministry, and calm uh, uh, and stuff, God will put it on your heart what to pray for. Okay, and also I just want to say, if you'd be so kind as to consider supporting us. Um, and this is not what I was I was thinking about, you know, the financial stuff with this ministry. This is a different issue altogether. But uh, I just want to let you know that we do need your support. And uh, we're not dying here. But if you would be so kind as to consider supporting us with 5 or $10 a month, that's what we ask. All you have to do is go to carm.org, C-A-R-M dot O-R-G, and uh, forward slash donate. And all the information you need is right there. And you can set it up very easily. And you can... Uh, Stop it when you want. And we do appreciate that. We like recurring, even if it's just a little bit, because it tells us what the budget can be when we work on things. We know what our our, our you know our finances are, and we do need that because we have missionaries in Colombia, Turkey, Brazil, uh, Malawi, and Nigeria. And uh, we're supporting them as they preach the gospel. And uh, they don't get a whole bunch, but I'll tell you, they're, they're great people of the Lord. Anyway, there's the music. I'm out of here. May the Lord bless you by his grace. We'll be back on there tomorrow and we'll talk to you then. God bless everybody. Okay. All right, Charlie, sound check. Sounds good. How about me? Good. Oh, okay. Good, good, good. All right. There we go. Yeah, Mr. Bill, I think I will do a uh, show tonight. I think in Facebook I said 6.30. Uh, people were attacking Calvinism, and I was thinking about doing something that way. So, uh so that's in about 90 minutes, wherever your time zone is for 90 minutes yeah. from now. Okay. Oh, here we go. There we go. There we go. Okay. So, yeah, uh, I did it last week, and I was thinking about doing it again this week just to see. And I don't plan to do it regularly, but you never know. It's just, just seeing because uh, it went well last week. Mm -hmm. We've got two people up with questions or statements in uh, Clubhouse. Okay. Ed is first, and, okay. Ed is first, and then Chris. All right. Go ahead. Go ahead. You're muted, Ed. Go ahead, Ed. Oh, hey, Matt. How are you, buddy? Oh, worn out, tired, beaten, oh, uh, but but swinging. Good reason, but uh, I don't have anything really to say. I just wish you could ask the folks to tell I'll buy you a coffee at McDonald's. We get the senior price. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait, yeah. you, you're in yeah. Pocatello? Yeah, so you never get that here, do you? Did you yeah, my brother, because my brother teaches tennis out there at a club. Oh, is it the one south of Pocatello? The, uh, Country Club or Pocatello? Wait a minute. Uh, you're in Pocatello? Yeah. Okay. Well, so you're out feedback going. So yeah, I've got a, my brother who sells tennis out there at a club. Okay, hold on. So, Amy, I think that's you, Amy. 
think you got to mute yourself. Here, I'll mute. There you go. So, yeah, he teaches out there, and I'm supposed to go out there in two, three, or four weeks. And we're going to, uh, or what we're talking about doing actually is meeting in Twin Falls because uh, he's there, I'm here, and uh, out in Nampa. And then we're going to spend a day out in Twin Falls playing tennis. Uh, he's got a racket for me. I used to play a lot when I was younger, but haven't picked it up in so long. But we want to do some filming out there in Pocatello uh, of him playing tennis and work up some stuff. And so, uh, you know, I go out there, might spend the night, you know, that kind of thing. But yeah, I'm out in Pocatello. I mean, yeah, he, he is. Um, I can check out it, but uh, maybe you can my email or something and you can let me know. We'll give you my phone number when you're, you know, a couple days. Or yeah. Something like that. Yeah. You know, and if you got a church out there that might want to have me come out and speak, I'd be glad to do that too. Because it's only three and a half hour drive. Church you don't like. The Nazarene is a non denominational. Yeah. Nazarene's got some problems, but they wouldn't want me. So, yeah. All right. Thank you, Matt. Sure. Okay. Thanks. Okay, and Crusader for Christ 99. Thanks for that $20 rant. Wow. Thank you. Really appreciate it. And Ed, before Chris starts, you can uh, email your information to info at farm.org. Yep. Hi, Chris. Hey, Joanne. Hi, Chris. I feel like uh, I feel like your Matt needs to get you that dog uh, at this point. Matt Blake, what do you think? Why? Needs another dog. Uh, yeah, a Grand Mastiff, three or four more Grand Mastiffs. <laughs> or a Saint Bernard. <laughs> Grand Mastiff, I think, is even bigger. So is yeah, there there is the world's biggest dog. I remember seeing something like that. So what's the world's biggest? Uh, dog. It's like the size of a small horse. The world's <laughs> biggest dog is a Kama Zorba of La Lusa, an old English Mastiff. He weighed 343 pounds, measured 8 feet 3 inches from nose to tail. That's right up Giant's alley. Yeah, a couple of those in your house would be great. Yeah. Well, we lost our Doberman and our Chihuahua in September, two weeks apart. You remember that, Matt. And um, so we're down to three now, and my Matt won't let me have another one. And Good. he's standing here grinning. He's standing here grinning because he says he's so mean. Well, um, if I could have it the way I would want it, I want no animals. None. <laughs> Not even a cat. I would like to just have nothing less to take care of. But I will admit, Flopper is kind of nice. Yeah. I I tell you what, I had a mastiff. Okay. Oh, I had a mastiff, and he took my full-grown son's head and had it in his mouth. He was a hundred and fifty pounds, and he wasn't even a year old. Wow. That's big. My son had one and it was a big couch potato. Yeah, they, uh, that, yep. Yeah. She'd let the kids dress her up and put glasses on her and they'd take pictures and she stood for it all. Didn't bother her a bit. So, Amy has a question Why would it take 800 years for the prophet Joseph Smith to materialize? They would just say that's just when God chose uh, to, to do it. That's all. They're just going to say, that's because that's what he chose. Yeah. So, so Matt, yeah, I wanted to, you know, first of all, say you're a dirty Manichaean and uh, Gnostic. Um, but uh, aside that, I did have a serious question. Um, all right, what have you got there? Um, yeah, I'm going to come up with a good one. <laughs> Ah, you got to have your ancient heresy list up. Oh, I got an ancient heresy, a new one I just learned, but I got to remember the word. Okay, I got to even pronounce it. Hold on. You're a slimy, 
Sandomanian. Sandomanianism. Sandomanian. The belief that you don't have to have a changed life in order to be saved. Manifest it. Oh, that's just called free grace. Yeah, free grace crap. Yeah. <laughs> Sandomanianism. I'm going to write an article on it. Yeah. I, I first thought that had something to do with building castles at the beach or something, but... Uh, yeah, yeah, while you're wearing sandals for the Sandomanian. Yes, that's right. There you go. And yet you have hourglasses to measure your time. Like back oh. there, right there is one right there. Oh, you can make it have something to do with Dune as well. Yeah, I can see that movie. It's like Dune. Did you see the second one? No, I haven't. My, my son and I just went for the third time today. Really? It's good, huh? Yeah, yeah. Really good. I want to go see it. My wife goes, don't go see it. Go see it with some friends. I just want to go see it. She's, All your friends live a thousand miles away. Well, no, there's there's some local ones, but it's like, hey, they want to maybe. I, it's like I just I just want to go see it, you know. And uh, uh, anyway, yeah. Okay, so here's my here's my actual curiosity. All the way. So, and the, and this made me need a little research. So, would we say that God's knowledge? Is based on his decree, or would we say that his decree and his knowledge are separate operations? They're separate operations, but they're intertwined eternally because you can't have one without the other, I would say. His decree and his knowledge, because we have to find what knowledge is. But whatever, see, God knows all things actual as potential. But did God in some time past decide to decree something where before that period of time he hadn't decided to do it? But if he knows all things, he'd know his eternal decrees eternally. So you can see how it's like uh, it's a tough one to answer. Uh, we want to kind of imply that everything was normal and um, simultaneous with God. Would you would you say that necess necessitarianism would be would have to be true at that point? Uh, in one sense, yes, but the necessitarianism says it's more like determinism. These things have to happen. You don't have free will, but we do have free will. God's just way above it and uh, works all things. Well, but does God have free will? I guess that's the other thing, right? Yes, God has free will. You have to define what free will is. Free will is the ability to make choices that are consistent with your nature that are not forced. So God has free will. He does whatever he desires. Yeah, it's just, I'm reading a book right now. It's actually really good. I know you don't have a lot of time to, to read because you're going to write so much. Yeah, I'm reading, uh, I'm reading a Leighton Flowers uh, release book on provisionism, and it's it's oh, weak. So it's, it's just weak. Yeah. But anyway, go ahead. Uh, well, this one is called The Revealed God by Dr. Jeffrey Johnson. Okay. Um, it is really good, and it's talking about biblical classical theism as opposed to philosophical classical theism. But it's kind of taking on Thomism um, with some of the Aristotelian presuppositions that it makes. And it's a, it is a very good book. Oh, okay. Well, good. The, uh, the other one I just got, and I'm just dipping my toe into this, is uh, an introduction to Precept um, by Joshua Pillows. Okay. You know John. Um, but he basically just reorganized a bunch of Van Hill and Bonson lectures into bite-sized chapters to introduce people to Presup. So they're like 10-page chapters. I'm the book's only like 200 pages long. So who's it by? Uh, it is, the book is called, so the, the first book I mentioned is The Revealed God by Je Jeffrey Johnson. And the other one I'm reading is uh, the objective proof for Christianity. And that's by Dr. Joshua Pillows. Oh, interesting. And I thought you said something about uh, um, presuppositionalism. Yeah, so the objective truth for Christianity is the interpretive precept. So it's... it's uh, it's like 10-page chapters introducing. Oh, okay. 
and it's it's so I've just started reading about the tag argument, and it's very complicated. It can um, be. I have a way of breaking it down. You have a way of breaking it down, but yeah. yeah. Um, but I can't find the book. I'm looking for it. Objective proof for Christianity. Uh, let me see if I can. Can you see the chat in Clubhouse? Yeah. Okay. Let me see if I can find a link. I'll put it. Okay. Why are you doing that, Chris? Bill can ask a question. It's probably about Warren and McGrew. Yeah, I've got um, Matt's question last week that Warren can't answer. Did you hear him, Matt? No, something about something, but I didn't. What? He asked Warren McGrew a question that he couldn't answer. He says, look on my website or my YouTube videos. Wait, I asked him a question he couldn't answer or or what? Yeah, he asked him a question. He says, look at my YouTube videos. Oh, yeah. Did Jesus literally atone for all sins of individuals? Yeah. yeah. He couldn't answer it very well. Yeah. Yeah. So, hopefully it's back to him. Well, I'm just waiting for your link. So I can check out that book. Yeah, I just put, just put the link in the chat. Well, I don't yeah, see you it. can't find it on Amazon or anything. It's like one of these things that reveals God. You can't find it. Well, I don't wait, wait. I don't see it anywhere. I, uh, your link is not. It's in the clubhouse chat. Oh, clubhouse. All right. Sorry. That's all right. If you're looking on YouTube. So. Yeah. Okay, there it is. There you go. Okay. Do you want me to post? Do you want me to post a link for Revealed God as well? Sure, if you want. Sure. Yeah, Revealed God is a lot. That's a that's a heavy lift. That's pretty dense. Um, and th never mind then. This one I'm interested okay. in. Uh, but you know the other one too. Put the other link in there anyway. You, you never know. Yeah. You got it. I know that. I know that there's, there's like you know, a lot of Reformed Baptists are having to deal with like Thomas um, rearing their ugly head again, and you know people just becoming papists. And so, uh, yeah, I think revealed God is a real good primer to fight some of that stuff. Yeah. Yeah, you never know. So, uh, yeah, put it in there, and I'll uh, look at it, too. I wish it was in uh, Kindle. I read everything in Kindle. I don't like getting regular books now. But um, I think the Josh Pillow is, you can get it on Kindle. Yeah, I think there is a Kindle version. The Objective Proof of Christianity, right? Yeah, I don't see it on uh, the objective proof for Christianity and yeah, it doesn't uh, come up. That's all right. So on the drop down list on the website, it will say paperback. And then if you click that, there's a PDF download for 10 bucks. Ooh, that's better. Um, there you go. Okay. Uh, uh, I don't see where. Where do you go then for that PDF? So if you look on the little, I'm on the mobile site. So if you look on the little website when you click that link for the Objective Truth of Christianity, there's a drop down for either deliverable of a paperback, which is what I. Oh, I see. If you click the little drop down, it'll go to PDF download, and the price changes to ten bucks. Okay, there you go. Thank you. Um, okay, good. Is the other book on there too? Yeah, I'm getting the link for that. Getting on it. What's the name of it? I'll just type it in. I'm in there. What is it? Oh, it's, well, it's not on that site. It's on oh. Google. It. It's the Revealed God by okay. Jeffrey D. Johnson. Okay. Is Previous book that Dr. Johnson just wrote is um, the failure of natural theology. So it directly yeah. attacks Aquinas. Yeah, of course it would be. It can't is not sufficient. Why well, we need special and incarnational? Yep.
Yeah, hmm. I thought those books were really good, so you might enjoy them. I think you're really going to like that Pillows book. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think so. Okay, good. Okay, there we go. There, okay, look at all this stuff here, doing all this stuff. All right, good. Okay. So, so be, be able to invite Warren McGrew back in tonight, ma'am. Bill will? Okay. Maybe you can answer the question. <laughs> oh, man. Me and Jimmy and Vincent on Clubhouse, we, we just... We just devastated Warren McGrew one night. He catched out. He's like, oh, it's late. I got to go to bed. It was like 930. <laughs> well, that does happen. Yeah, we'll see if they want to join and uh, we have discussions. So, okay. It's all right. We'll just see what happens. So, I'm um, did did everybody in Clubhouse hear that tonight at eight thirty Eastern time, Matt's going to do uh, another show if nothing happens between now and then? Right. Uh, he's going to do another show like he did last week on Facebook and YouTube. Yeah, I'm going to do that uh, about an hour and ten. I'll just open up, see what happens, just to see. Is it going to be on here too? What's here? Uh, wasn't thinking about it. I'm just going to send it to like, um, were you thinking of rumble? I, I could do it. I guess, I guess I could do it with rumble. I rumble and, uh, Facebook, uh, Carm and, uh, you and YouTube Carm. I'll do that. I'll see about Facebook too, if I can do it. Okay. I wasn't thinking uh, of doing that, but I'll consider it, I guess. Matt, that's where all the rude anti Calvinists that were yelling at you the other night were from. Come on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what? You found you yeah. found rude anti Calvinists? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah I know imagine that. that. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you remember Summer? Summer? She was very rude. Oh, yeah. She was horrible. <laughs> well, we all have a run with her. And What's that? Honest, we all have a run ins with her. Oh, man. Yeah. I had no idea. Well, she was... just wrote that book, too, Matt. Um, and then he, he tangled with you for about two minutes, and then he cashed out. Because he was like, well, I'm not going to tell you what I think. I just want to know what you think. And you're like, that's not how conversations work. That's, <laughs> that's right. That's right. It goes two ways. I'm not going to answer your question. Uh, go away then. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you're not, you're not the boss of me. That's right. <laughs> Well, um, I put the link for that revealed God book um, in okay. the clubhouse chat. So All right. In the clubhouse chat, you'll see that book. Okay, sounds good. Thanks. Yep, yep. It would be. Uh, do you do interviews ever with like other teachers or? Do I? Know? What do you mean? Do I enter? Do I interview? Get interviewed or interview them? Well, both. I mean, I suppose, but like. You know, like, do you ever, so like, for instance, if somebody comes out with a new book, do you like interview them for your show or anything like that? Or do you no. not really like one of the things you do? Yeah, I don't really like doing that. Yeah, it doesn't. Not promotions, Chris. You know, it, it just doesn't, I don't know. It's just like, whatever. Um, you know, hey, you want to interview me on your radio show on how great my book is? Like, uh, I don't even, I, I haven't read it. I don't know who you are. So, you know, I don't like to just jump in and say, okay, you know. Yeah, I mean, this is a very dense book. I mean, it's taken me two weeks to get through the first 70 pages, so. Oh, that's fast for you. That is fast for me, let me tell you. And whenever my 14-year-old starts getting big in his britches, I just hand him Jonathan Edwards. I'm like, great, read a paragraph of this. There you go. Out. There you go. <laughs> 
can do promotions by Matt Slick has books on Amazon. Yeah. Yeah. All right, everybody. I'm gonna get going. I gotta rest, eat, get ready, okay? Okay, God bless you. All right, I'll put links in uh, the CARM calendar, you know, CARM.org forward slash calendar. I'll put that in there. All right, God bless everybody. You we'll too. See ya. All right.